Can you edit 4K videos with a 2011 iMac? Let's go find out. Hey, welcome back. So today I wanted to make a video. I've made a couple of videos on the 2011 iMacs. And they're great little machines. Obviously the OS is a little bit of an issue right now because it's not that upgradable. But can you, let's say you're getting just started into basic video editing and you want to use iMovie and things like that and, and you know now obviously 4K is a big thing. I do almost all my videos in 1080p which this one will be in. But I wanted to make another video just to show people if I have a 2011, what is that going on, 9, 10 years old iMac and I have a 21.5 inch 2011 iMac with um, I'm going to have 12 gigs of RAM in it, just want to disclose all that, 12 gigs of RAM. And I'm actually running off an external SSD drive. Um, I have a ton of videos on how to you know, run your OS off an external SSD with the 2011 machines. Check out my channel, check out all those videos. I'm not going to go through that here. But those are the two caveats with this, is I have you know, 12 gigs of RAM, not 8. And I also have, I'm running an SSD basically connected into it. And I, my, my OS is running off that SSD, so it's a little bit faster. I think it's like three to 400 megabits per second. But can I run 4K editing on an old machine like this? Can you get away with, you know, let's say you just want to do some basic YouTube videos like this and various other tasks and stuff. The experience, my guess, is not going to be great, but can it be done? Let's just dive into it. I'm going to show you how it, you know, can I do it? I'm going to show you the experience really quickly. It's not going to be super in depth, just showing you some examples. Let's go. All right, so let's get started. So what I did today is I actually have a bunch of 4K clips over here. And uh, let me go ahead and just show you. I'm going to right click on them and I'm going to click on Get Info. And as you can see here, if you look over here, let's go into Video Info right here. You can see it's 38 by 40 by 2160, so that's 4K H264. Um, so let's go ahead and shut that down. But basically, these are all going to be 4K, and I'm on a 2011, 2011 iMac. It's the i5 model. I got 12 gigs of RAM, and I'm using a Lacey. Um, it's an external SSD drive. I'm booting the OS off of, which I just kind of explained before, just so there's no surprises. I'm not, I'm not using a spinning drive, but I'm using an external drive for the OS. And check out my other videos for that. So, what we're going to show you is, can you do this in 4K today, and what's the experience overall like? So let's. The very first thing I want to do is I want to open up iMovie. I actually just when I go back and you know I created a file called 4k here so I'm just going to double click on it there's nothing in here so let's go ahead and you know even dragging sometimes these files are so big um, into here can be kind of a hassle let me go ahead and grab all the clips here that we need um, it's going to grab all these and we're going to make a short movie just to show you what the process is like and really I'm in iMovie again so you might be using a different product that might be less or more capable but I just wanted to show people that are just starting out with basic video editing. Let's go ahead and drag it over here. And uh, so what it did is it populated up here. Um, I have these are all 4K. I'm going to unselect them. Some of them are going to be not the best tones. I, mean, I didn't color correct or anything like that. I'm just really more or less trying to show you guys how to do this. So keep that in mind. I'm not color correcting some of these videos. Um, long story short, those, we're going to show you the experience and everything about it. So let's go ahead and get started and uh, you know, obviously post some questions and things in the comments. But I just wanted to show you can you actually do 4K video editing on a computer that's almost 10 or 11 years old? I guess 9 or 10 years, I'm sorry. And uh, with only 12 gigs of RAM and it's only, you know, it's running a really old i5. All right, so let's go ahead and begin. So the couple things you want to notice right away after I drag the clips in here, if you go ahead and click on a clip, you can see the clip in the right now. If you actually go back and forth on the clip, you're going to see up here where my, my cursor is, there's a little bit of stuttering. See that? It's not going to be super, super smooth. And that's going to be probably one of the biggest things that you're going to have to deal with is not having that smooth timeline. See that? How it's kind of staggering. Now granted, it plays. It's not crashing. Well, at least not now. <laughs> and uh, so everything seems like it's so decent and okay. I think that the areas you're going to have trouble with are some, some transitions and things like that where it's going to be really slow. And just if you want to get down to fine editing. So let's go ahead and just throw some clips in just to kind of begin. Here's another clip. Um, you know, we're moving into a house that's not even close to done. So um, some of my appliances are having put away yet but anyways here they are what I'm gonna do is let me go ahead and drag this clip it's 19 seconds I'm gonna go ahead and drag it into the timeline down here and let's go ahead and make this a little bit shorter so that we can kind of see more of the timeline down here so if you're looking down here again now look at me drag over the timeline with my mouse I'm kind of 
it takes a couple seconds to catch up. I don't know if you can see that. Now granted, it's definitely workable. I mean, you can even get pretty fine little, see how it's moving really slow now and see how it's kind of moving slow. Is it frame by frame? It's definitely dropping some frames, but at the end of the day, um, it's not too bad. I mean, I could definitely edit with this if I had to. And you know, you're talking probably $200 for this iMac right now if you want to do some basic edit, video editing. So let's go ahead and drop a couple more of these clips in. This isn't anything that's going to be in particular. I mean, again, this is not something that I'm really going to uh, <laughs> be making a real video out of. So uh, I'm just going to drop a couple of these things in here. And let me go ahead and put this one in. A bunch of moving stuff. So we have, you know, everything kind of gets populated in there. And again, it's going to be very bit, a little bit slow on these timelines here, but that's not the end of the world. So uh, let me drop maybe one more in at the very end here. So a couple of things that we can do really quickly is let's just add some, some transitions and things between these two clips. And I think this is where we're going to see a little bit more problems. So if we go back up here to transitions and let's just do like a, you know, cross blur maybe. Let's drop that in here. My guess is, so let me go ahead and I'll play this and you'll watch up here in the upper right hand corner. It's not going to probably be that smooth before we render it. So let's go ahead and play it. And see that the playback is not really smooth at all. So if you see this here, you're seeing kind of a staggering on the playback. And this is going to be the biggest problem is playing back the videos in 4K. Now I can, it seems it's even a little bit more smooth if I just drag like this, but watch, if I go ahead and click the spacebar and play this clip, it smoothed out a little bit, but now it's having some trouble. So as you can see, it's a little bit, it's, it's staggering. So it's 4K right there. So it's doable and you're gonna maybe have to render and look at it and then, you know, make some changes and stuff if you really want to get down to the nitty gritty. But if you kind of know what you're doing with video editing and you don't really have to go back a million times, it might not be that bad. So let's go ahead and go back to the clips up here. And I'm just going to throw some clips, you know, over here. Let's just go ahead and throw this one on top of it. We're going to go ahead and you can see this, I'm doing everything in real time. I mean, nothing's really, um, you know, breaking right now. So obviously this is the clip. So you watch when I mouse over it down here, you know, it takes a second to change to the other video. But let's go ahead and click on this and let's go up to here and let's go ahead and pick picture and picture. So we'll put this over here. Let's just say we're explaining something, something's going on. We want a picture and picture. So if I go ahead and play this in the timeline down here, let's go ahead and click that. Look at this. So it took a while for that to even come up and you know it's not really coming up that well so you can see some of the limitations to this again nothing's crashing on me and it's working fairly good um, but at you know for, for a couple hundred bucks you can't really complain with it again you know putting videos and stuff over on top of them when you're running multiple ones it's not going to play that smooth back and that's a good just a good example of it same thing with like text let's go ahead up to here let's say we want to do some titles at the very beginning let's say we just throw a title in let's just go ahead and type in test. So let's just go ahead and see when we play the video back down here. You know, you can see the text, it's there. The video in the back basically seems like it's a little bit less fluid, fluid than even the text is. And so far that's, you know, what you're going to get from this is just that, that playback experience. Let's go into here. Let's say we look at this. Let's go up to our palette up here and let's see if we wanted to color correct this. As you can see, there's not going to be any limitation with that. I mean, it's 4K and I can go ahead and color correct this thing fairly easy. There's no staggering this way. Um, and, you know, it's going to definitely be very easy to do that kind of stuff. So again, if I select this video and I go up here and let's say I go to, let's click this, let's say I go auto. It takes a couple seconds and it's going to basically auto color correct it. It is in 4K and uh, you can see how it didn't make didn't do a lot of changes but at the end of the day it does do it very quickly um, other things like this if you want to do like crop to fill all these type of features you know even though it's a 4k video let's just do that and let's click that and that all works really fast so again if i go back to this we crop this whole video it's now cropped in it's just that playback that's going to hurt us nothing else so far is really hurting us that bad um, just the playback um, the one thing I was just curious about, let's pick this clip here again. Let's pick this. This might take a little while. So if I click on this, which is going to be the stabilization, let's see how long it takes here. I'm going to go ahead and click that. 
as you can see it says analyzing for dormant motion so I'm not sure you know on this type of a computer how long it's gonna take this is only maybe like a 10 second click here or 10 second clip that we're trying to do stabilize stabilization on and um, it's the clip that's basically right down here and it's still going so I mean I could still continue to work and we'll come back to it if, if it's gonna take a really long time I think it's when you make changes like that um, you know like rolling shutter changes or stabilization changes that are gonna really take a long time you know, these again, these are going to be very basic videos. If you're going to get into like the nitty gritty stuff on, on the 2011, you're going to run into problems with 4K. On 1080p, it works perfectly fine. I do all my videos on these you know, systems. I have a 2017 iMac as well, but on these older systems, I use them you know, almost on a regular basis. So it works great for 1080p. This thing, I mean, I'm almost ready to shut it off. I mean, it's still, still analyzing it. We're going to have to come back to that because it's just, you can see how long it's taking. Um, so I'm going to go back to my media, but I'm just going to add a couple more of these videos in here and let me go ahead and do this one so that we have at least, you know, a decent sized file here. It's a minute and 30, nothing huge. Um, this thing's still going, believe it or not. And in the meantime, I'm going to render this and show you how long it takes to render. And so let's just say you put this together. Let's just go ahead and put some things in here you might put in, like, you know, let's say you have a title here. Um, and I'm not even going to put anything on that title. It's just going to be some basic text there. And uh, what else can we do in here? I mean, there's backgrounds we can throw in. There's going to be transitions. Let's just go ahead and, you know, maybe do one more transition right in here like that. I do think that that video might have st may maybe finally, f oh, no, it's still analyzing for dominant. <laughs> it's still going. So um, it's still going, believe it or not. So that's one thing that you may not want to try on this. Um, and one, really the only thing I found so far that's really bad actually. So here's the video you can see it's you know it's, it's a basic 4k there's a transition there um, we got a, a little bit of a picture in picture coming up goes to this thing still analyzing which I'm going to stop in a second and then you get you know another video and then you got this other outside with some titles here so it would be a very basic YouTube video at the say the least and it's only a minute and 30 seconds so let's go ahead and try to render this in a second and uh, let's see what happens once we render it and how long it takes to render in 4k and then we'll kind of wrap up the video all right so it looks like it just finally stopped there so I don't know if anyone was timing it I actually didn't but it looks like it was probably three or four minutes maybe or something like that so quite a long time um, for that thing to be analyzing for a 10 second clip. Anyway, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and render this as if it was a new video. So first thing I like to do is I, I'm going to click out of the projects just to kind of save it, come back and I don't know why, but sometimes it seems like it just makes things, you know, kind of clear up everything and you don't have as many problems when you do that. So now it's all saved here in iMovie. You can see it's a minute and basically 30 seconds. I'm going to go ahead and render this and then I'm going to, you know, on the outside here I have a clock. I'm going to go ahead and start and we're going to time this one. So let's go back in here and we're going to go up to here and we're going to go up to file and uh, we're going to do iMovie, this you know, video about 4K, we're going to do video and audio and then we're going to change 1080p to 4K. Now we're going to do, just on this one we're going to do high, just to show you high and then compression is going to be better quality because that's what I do, not fast but better quality. So you can see the settings right here. The file size is 329 megabytes and, and it's uh, 1 minute and 30 seconds or 1 minute and 29. So I'm going to go ahead and click next and then we're going to name it 4K test. We're going to save it and then we're going to come really quickly out of this. So you may have to add a couple seconds and go. Click on that um, and let's go ahead and see how long this takes. And, and I'll come back you know, in a second to show everyone what this is going to take. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and go back out here. And we can see that it's up here rendering. It took 38 minutes roughly. I stopped it a little bit late. So let's say 38 minutes for a minute and a half clip. 38 minutes. <laughs> So let's go ahead and, and let's go to Launchpad down here. Um, let me go ahead and bring up a calculator. I just want to show people maybe what that means. This is one of the reasons you may not want to do this. This is the, you know, if you can set this and leave it overnight, it's a completely different story um, if you can do that. So if I click on the calculator here, and let's just, so, so that was 38 minutes. Let's divide it by 1 point, well, 38 minutes, so 1.3 is what, one and a half, 1.5 roughly. So it's about 25 times. So you know, let's just assume you have a 10 minute video times 25, you know, roughly 250 minutes for a 10 minute video 
that's going to be, you know, four hours. So you have a major problem with long videos. For short videos in 4K, you can see it's not the biggest problem. I mean, you, you know, you have to wait 38 minutes, 40 minutes, maybe an hour. But when you get into 10 minute videos and things like that, um, it's going to be atrocious. Um, so you got to put, you know, you got to set it and go to sleep and then wake up and it'll be done in the morning. And that's your biggest caveat with these old systems is the rendering times. It did, it was successful. Nothing really, you know, obviously crashed on me. And if I go back in here really quickly to go to documents, here it is, and I'll go ahead and play it really quickly. But as you can see, the playback is going to be, although it's not going to probably play the best because I'm playing it on 2011, but it, take my word, it's going to be smooth if you upload it to YouTube and what have you, so it will work. But the moral of the story is, is you know, for the money, for 200 bucks, is it doable in 4K? Yes. Are you going to have a good experience with it? In, in the editing tool, maybe, but when you render it, it's going to be brutal. Um, depends how much time you have, if you have a lot of time, like in quarantine and stuff. But if you're on a schedule or running a business, obviously, that's not going to be a great option. But just for personal YouTube videos, you know, if you have time, it should work okay. All right, so what did you think? You know, in this day and age, you know, no one knows what's going on in the world. You know, we don't want to spend a lot of money, especially a couple, three, four thousand dollars on a machine. You know, can you get away with a little bit of stuttering? Can you make it work? And the question is, you know, the answer is yes. If you can actually get these systems to work on 4K, you know, albeit they're not the best, they're not gonna be the fastest, you're not gonna be, you know, a Casey Neistat out there or someone that's making these high-end videos. But at the end of the day, you know, no one's gonna know the difference once you, write, once you finish the rendering. I mean, they're gonna still play the same um, on YouTube. No one's gonna know that you're, you know, on a 2011 iMac, there's no way to know that. So, you know, for 250 bucks, you can pick these things up, maybe even less than that, maybe $200. Comes with the screen, comes with, you know, iMovie included. I mean, sometimes just the software you buy um, with Adobe can be more than that. So if you want to get into video editing, um, just YouTube channel and stuff like that, you don't have a huge budget, you know, buy a used iMac. Um, I would recommend not maybe the 2011. I have two of these. I have a, another 27 inch um, that actually has a different, you know, different video card, so it might be even more capable. But basically, I would go with at least the 2012 just because of the OS upgrade ability. And uh, but anything above that is perfectly capable, you know, if you're willing to mess around like I did and kind of stomach the pain. So, anyways, stay safe out there. I know the coronavirus is going on, and I, you know, I hope everyone's staying safe. That's why I'm kind of filming in kind of crazy conditions and what have you, but soon my studio will be ready. Go ahead and support the channel if you can. I'll make more videos like this. Check out my channel. I have hundreds of uh, Apple videos. Take care. We'll see you soon.